Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, today we'll be talking about the fluid property package selection for process simulations. So in a previous video where we had set up the process simulation from the beginning up to you know getting your flow um, your flow sheet um, started, we had looked at um, how we can get the component list listed and also how we can select a property package. And I've received a lot of questions about that, you know, and a lot of interest in this video. So I'm finally doing it. So I will be talking about the different types of property packages that we could have, why is it important to select the right one, and just some helpful tips that I've um, seen from um, different um, literature. So if you're interested in this, please keep on listening and watching the video. So what are property packages? These are a set of uh, models that are used to define the physical properties that we would then use to solve our process simulation. So we use it to calculate our thermodynamic properties, so things like our enthalpy, our entropy, free Gibbs free energy and all that. Um, we also use it to calculate kinetic properties. So if we've got um, reactions, the rates and the mechanism of the reaction, the activation energy and um, the likes. For the mass, we also use it to calculate mass transport um, properties. That's how the fluid is flowing or how the components are flowing. So that includes properties such as viscosity, thermal conductivity, diffusion coefficients, and the likes of that. So when we select, so it's really important for us to select the right property package for us to get the, to for the simulation to be able to predict the right, the um, correct values for, for these properties. So there are two main types of well, two main types of this property packages, as well as some other um, types as well. But the two main types we'll be looking at at is um, are the equation of state method and the activity coefficient method. So the equation of state method is um, it, this is mainly used for nonpolar components over a wide range of the temperatures and pressures and it works quite well even at critical, subcritical and supercritical regions. So examples of that that you would see in your um, regular, in, in, your, in the common process simulators are Peng Robinson, um, SRK and the likes of that. Um, for the activity coefficient method, this is mainly used for subcritical and highly non-ideal liquid systems at low pressures and away from the critical region so it's not very good at the at the critical region and examples include the non-random two liquid um, unifact uniquack um, etc so for the activity coefficient method we have three types under that um, we have the molecular models we have the group contribution models and we have the electrolyte activity coefficient models so for the non-electrolyte activity um, for the non-electrolyte solutions rather we could either have correlative models or predictive models and those are the molecular or the group contribution models so then we also have others that don't quite fit into either being an equation of state model or an activity question model and these are include things like the steam tables sour, sour water systems and all of that it's very important for us to choose the right model because it's um this helps us to for the this is important for the process simulation to be quite accurate and the reason why we're doing the process simulation is for us to have you know a, a good um a good depiction of what we actually have in our plant or in our process and so it's important for us to use the right model um that works well for the right temperatures and pressures um conditions that we have we are able to find out which how accurate a simulation is by comparing the phase diagrams that are obtained in the simulations with the literature data. So things like, you know, our, for example, our Perry's um, chemical handbook and other literature. So, yeah. so this chart here gives you some sort of guideline on how you can select the property package for your simulation. So you can see that it depends on different um, parameters such as if the components are polar or non-polar, if they're electrolytes or non-electrolytes, if they are real or pseudo components and um, real components as well. Um, and then here we look at, you know, if if we've got less than 10 atmosphere or if we're, if, if we're operating at less than 10 atmosphere or greater than 10 atmosphere, it's quite important for us to um, 
that that can also affect what sort of property package um, works well. Another thing that's quite important is the interaction parameters. And the good thing about DWSIM is that you're able to put in those um, inter interaction parameters. Um, maybe you got, and, and this could be obtained, you know, from literature or from your own com company um, generated data. And then we also tend to look at the, um, if we've got liquid, liquid equilibrium in our um, system as well. So these are, and basically this shows us that, for example, if we're look, working with a polar non-electrolyte system at less than 10 atmosphere, and we've got the interaction parameters available, and we've also got liquid-liquid equilibrium, we could work with Wilson or Uniquark. But if we've not got it, we could work with um, the non-random two liquid or Uniquark as well. Um, so basically just going through this sort of gives us an idea of what we could use. So we can see that Penn Robinson is usually used and SRK are usually used for non-polar and real um, components. So for example, our hydrocarbons as well. When we've got high pressure for pseudo and real components, um, is a, we, we are able to use um, Charles Cedar or Grayson Street depending on and then if we are working in a, in a vacuum environment, we can use the ideal um, equation of state or also known as the Rawls law. So this is just a, a guideline. It's also quite important. So possibly if you're working in a, in a company and you know, you've got previous um, simulations that have been done, it's important for you to speak with the senior engineers or speak with people around or look into literature as well to see what sort of, um, what, what property package has been used and just try to figure out as well why that has been used um I th that that would definitely help um these are just guidelines as well that could so these are just some helpful tips on how to um select the right package so for example hydrocarbon systems we can use peng robinson for water and steam utility we can use um the steam package um, sour water, we can use it when we've got systems containing hydrogen sulfide, CO2, and ammonia at low to moderate um, pressures as well. The Chalcedon model, as we saw earlier on, we can use it for hydrocarbon systems with temperatures between 0 and 500 degrees centigrade and um, um, fairly high um, pre pressures as well. Um, and then if we now have, in addition to that system, if we've got heavy hydrocarbons as well and they've got high H2 um, content, we can use and, you know, we, we can use the Grayson Street model, which is a an extension of the Chalcida model. So these are just a few examples. As I mentioned before, we can also look into the literature. We can speak to senior engineers as well to understand why they are using which um property package they've used before. And it's always important if we've got data, if we can sort of use the data to um compare the phase diagrams with what we are getting in the simulation, then that helps as well for us to know that we are on the right track in terms of selecting the right property package. So I hope this helps. Please don't forget to share, subscribe, and like this video. And if you've got any questions, please send them to me. Um, please put them in the in, in the um, chat below, or you can send me an email at engineertt at gmail.com. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.